Hey guys, Grand Rising. I have my coffee with me today, so Grand Rising. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, recording a podcast and working fucking 48 hours a week, it's not an easy thing to do, but this recording is almost like... um. I don't know. It's like a stress relief for me, too. So I'm still here for it. <laughs> so, hey, guys. <laughs> um, by now, if you've been listening to me, you know that I try to live each day the fucking best I can, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm nothing special. Don't don't we all? Don't we all fucking do that? Don't, don't, shouldn't we all do that? Try, right? Uh, I think so. (laughs) And, And, you know, that doesn't mean, you guys, that, you know, living every day best I can, that every day I'm doing fucking something extraordinary, like, you know, swinging through the trees like a fucking, Tarzan or acrobat or whatever, you know, like not, not, uh, nothing crazy. (laughs) Nothing like that. No, (laughs) I'm just, I don't know. I'm just fucking me. (laughs) Just like all of you are fucking you, right? Just who you are. I am who I am. I have, uh, All the things in life that make up a life, right? You know, a job, family, friends, stress. (laughs) But I feel like since I started living my life using a different perspective, I'm just flowing along now. And I find it easier to allow life to happen all around me. And... I don't know, it's made a big difference in how that stress in life actually affects me. And I know that that's a big change for me. Because I know if I was to look back on myself before now, well, let's just say that stress, I really used to let it take over. It dominated my fucking life, okay? It's sad, but it's true. And you know... What's even sadder for me is I know I'm not alone in having lived that way. So, as humans, I started thinking about how can we collectively stress less, yeah? So, hey, let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. I learn how not to stress. <laughs> and yes. Uh, stress less, of course. But, of course, you know, I do. I still regress. I regress with my stress. Mm. <laughs> Human nature, right? And I allow sometimes those stressful things in life to get to me. Sometimes I still do. I am human, after all. Yeah. So when someone or, or or something fucking hurts my heart or if work is piling on and, and bearing down on me, right? Stress. Stressful. And it's stress we all know. Even healing, okay? I can still find myself in situations feeling hurt because of the stress of it. But... I've come to know that if I let those things affect me, then I'm giving them a sense of power over me, yeah? And those things will continue to affect me whether I fucking want them to or not. It's a fucking damn subconscious thing that we naturally do as humans. Hmm? (laughs) Uh, We all do it. Yeah, I'm just like you and you're just like me. (laughs) I might be a little bit weirder and maybe a little bit more honest. (laughs) 
No, I'm just kidding. So yeah, usually I stress because I find that if I step back and look at myself, if I observe the observer, right, I'm dwelling on things that I wish were different than they are. That, that's what causes most of the stress in our lives. I learned that when I do that, when I wish things to be different, yeah, I'm fighting against the law of attraction. Especially since in order to get where I am, I've used that same law of attraction, right? Uh, at some point in my life, I asked for circumstances to happen that did happen. And I asked for circumstances to not happen that didn't happen, right? And they all led me to who I am, where I am, and how I am right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting to think about, yeah? So going by that logic, right, that means that whatever is happening needs to happen to get me to where I'm meant to be. If I believe in the human ability to manifest what we want, right? It's where, um, you know, where I told the universe I wanted to be, right? That's what manifesting is. You put it out, you let it go, and you let it come to you. Mm. Like I just said, how I live my life, right? So as long as I continue on that path, I can keep, I don't know, just moving along, more accepting of what comes at me, Hmm. Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> a little hot dog with the fucking flag and the popcorn. <laughs> uh, but anyway, right? Let's say, let's say I reverse it and, and, and instead I decide I'm going to dwell on things that I don't understand, right? I'm trying to explain what I couldn't possibly simply due to lack of information. Hmm? And, and... Uh, I allow the hurt to overcome me in some way, right? Well, the fucking truth is, guys, when I do that, I'm literally sitting over here telling the damn universe that I don't have what I want or need. And because I'm dwelling on it, that energy pours out of me, right? The energy of lack. Mm -hmm. And I end up attracting more of that energy that I don't fucking want. I'm telling the universe to fuck me over, basically, by concentrating on the shitty feeling things that happen around me and cause me stress in any way. And guess what, pals? <laughs> I guarantee you, from time to time, you're doing the same fucking thing. Whether you're healed enough to admit it or not, as a human, you are doing it. We all do it. But, we can also all stop doing it if we really want to. And I know I do, right? So yeah, you can bet your ass I'm actively shifting every time I catch myself falling into this trap in my own life. Again, I am still learning, but I know I'm healing myself because I do catch myself doing this now before it spirals way out of my control, right? And all of a sudden, I feel like everything's against me, right? We all been there. And, you know, that's a very big thing for me. Especially me, because if you don't know me personally, you you know, but you know how they say, like, the black sheep of the family? Well, I'm the black sheep on the mother side of my family, and I'm the fucking black sheep on the father side of my family. Like, most of my life, since early childhood, I have had to navigate alone. Independent and strong and alone. Not always fun, but it's made me who I am. Actually, I don't think my heart would be as big as it is if the people who were supposed to love me the most didn't drop the ball like they did. But it is what it is, right? And, you know, yeah, so it's a big thing for me to catch that uh, before it spirals out of control. And truth is, you guys, because I don't fucking lie to you, I don't catch it right away. Not all the time. Don't, don't think that living more consciously means we instantly get it every single time, right? And, and, and pivot when we have to. No. Sometimes 
It's that good old fucking lesson that has to be learned. And the only way we can learn it is to get out of our heads around what is stressing us the fuck out and really look at the whole story from, you know, a higher viewpoint. You know, uh, you know, I actually touch base on that higher viewpoint in the episode called The Bigger Picture. It's a few episodes back, so if this episode is speaking to you, that might be one you want to listen to if you haven't fucking listened to it yet. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, so, hmm, let's talk about some stress <laughs> and how we can maneuver our own selves around when it comes to stress, right? And first and foremost, you guys, I'm going to tell you, the way to better manage your stress is not to fucking whine and definitely don't gossip about it. It's okay to feel things in silence, right? It's not going to help at all to gossip and whine and complain. And here's why. You're focusing your energy on it by feeding into the negativity around it. Uh, that's what gossiping is, by the way. Feeding negativity. <laughs> um, you're creating more negative energy in your life by doing that. And you're doing it and you don't even realize that you are. Sometimes we think we're venting, but, you know, yeah, vent for a minute. Don't keep going to every fucking person you come across and vent. That's exaggerated venting. <laughs> That's too much. Let it go. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you, you got to learn to step back from the stressor itself and see why you feel that stress around whatever it is. Once you do that, that's how you begin to find solutions of ways that would alleviate that stress, right? Again, dwelling on the problem only creates more problem, okay? Focusing on the solution creates more solutions. But you have to keep an open heart to do this and not let your mind run away with ego-driven thoughts about how you've been wronged because of said stress. You feel me? And, you know, of course, I can give you some guidance as to, you know, what fucking works for me. And, again, these are my tricks and, and, and tips, you know, and maybe some will work for you and some won't. But the key is to be open to finding ways to make it work in your own life and for the greatest good of all who happen to touch your life in any way. That's self-love. Um, that's the self-love that we need to have, the kind that's not selfish, right? Because you're trying to help not only you, but everybody around you, yeah? If you can work on healing you and what stresses you, then you automatically start healing those around you because the energy you're focusing on is healing and not draining. See? I think we've all been around other people, people who make us feel uplifted just by being who they are and people who drain the shit out of us just by being who they are. You see what I'm saying? So if we as humans can just know that we are all loved, okay? It starts with that. That the creator of all things is part of us. And however you believe that creator exists, okay? <sighs> then because of that, we know that we are loved, right? And we see that the creator of all that is, is working through our lives, through us living them. And that all happens through our thoughts, our triumphs, and, and challenges, right? And by going within and seeing why we are influenced in the ways we are by these situations, be they stressful or not, right, of life, then we will learn over time that our genius creator is simply showing us only what needs to be seen at any given time. And we absorb it to our own sense of self in this world. If... If the creator of all that is, okay, decided to show us all that is, then our small human minds would fucking explode with all that energy and knowledge and feeling. It's like, uh, it's like that movie Dogma, right? When if they heard the voice of God, their heads would explode. She makes Ben Affleck's head explode in that movie. Hmm? 
<laughs> it's the same idea. And, and our creator doesn't want that. So I think like that's why we are shown little by little in the amounts that we can handle. And the cool fucking thing, you guys, is... Um, you know, as we actually shift our consciousness and grow into the best versions of us, we're able to handle a little more each time. We connect the dots easier and easier, and we begin to see and understand what is happening all around us, and more importantly, why it's affecting us in the way that it does. And we heal the ones, the situations or whatever that don't serve our best good. And I don't know, isn't it also kind of badass that we have the ability to do this all on our own by just going within and really understanding what makes us the very human we currently are? And that if we don't like parts of that, that we also have all the ability in the universe to change it for us, to make our own self and our own lives better? (laughs) I fucking think so. (laughs) I mean... What's so wrong with inspiring our own damn self? What's so wrong with wanting to change our own lives for the greater good? Fucking nothing is wrong with that. Nothing. And, and if you think otherwise, well, maybe that should tell you something right there about the state you're, you're currently living your own life in. I'm just saying. I don't know. We as humans seem to have gotten so used to living with stress... Because for one reason or another, we have gotten comfortable with a certain level of suffering. And I'm just sitting over here in my own life like, why am I fucking doing this? (laughs) How does this make any sense? And I came to the conclusion that it doesn't. It fucking doesn't. Not for me, anyway. I want to feel my heart's excitement every fucking minute that I possibly can. And so... I choose to seek that in every minute I'm able to. And if it's not a time for that, then I choose to seek to understand my lesson in that situation. And my stress, you guys, is now almost non-existent. Or at the very least, a small blip in my day. And I will tell you, not much lingers into the next day. I will tell you that much. Why carry over what doesn't feel good? That's stupid. (laughs) I want to take this heavy rock with me everywhere I go. Why? Because it's heavy. No. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. (laughs) My friend, um, she would say, that's that's you. You, you, I need some of your genergy. She used to call it genergy. She's so sweet. I miss her. She's down in South Carolina. Um, But it's just how I learned to feel good about me, you know, in all my dealings in my own life, yeah? It's a fucking service I have come to love about my life, right? It's a form of service. Of course it is. Self-service. Let's all go to the lobby. (laughs) A twist in thinking. Ah. It just really changed my own perspective. And I don't know. I guess it's a service that I'm guided to share with all of you. And, and, you know, one thing I've come to know, um, because I've always liked to help people in in whatever way I could. Um, But I used to, to to view the word service as something different. Service, it's not about servitude, okay? To be of service to others... It's what I do through this podcast. Um, But I know I don't owe anyone anything, okay? And neither do you. So service is a beautiful thing, right? It's how we can help each other grow. But it's important to know that serving others in any way, it should never put you in a bind or, you know, blind you to what is going on around you. With, with service of any kind, you never want to give to those who do not appreciate you, right? It's fucking simple as I can make it, okay? And, you know, I think it's that way for the universe too. A law of attraction, right? Why would the universe, or the creative all that is, right, give to those who don't value 
what the creator is giving us in the now. Hmm? It's that old saying, what goes around comes around, yeah? So yes, I fully believe that the universe will inspire us to grow through these uh, stress factors in life, yeah? It, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like fucking winning that old show that um, Joe Rogan used to host, um, Fear Factor, right? At the end, he would always end every episode with, and clearly, fear is not a factor for you. Hmm? <laughs> That's what I like to think of as I navigate myself. Through the fucking stress, or, you know, stress, dreadful, fucking stressful situations in my own life. As I see it all as just the universe conspiring to inspire me to get into my best life, right? I don't know. It's just how I like to think about it. It's how I like to look at it. It's how I like to live. I do. And I just always believe one thing about life. It is possible. It is possible. Emphasis on it is bold fucking letters possible. Okay? (laughs) I don't know. I've learned that if I can just accept the inspiration coming to me, that I embrace my own chance to grow. And that is something that I am very proud to fucking be able to do. And, And you know... It's also fucking kind of exciting because once we allow the inspiration the universe is sending us, once we allow that in, whether it's through synchronicity with people or whatever else, you know, I don't know. It's like suddenly it's like situations and opportunities are falling into place that help bring the inspiration into reality. And again, not all these inspirations have to be grand fucking events. We got to stop looking at life like that, right? Isn't the fact that we're here living the grandest event of all? So when we view life like that, even the small inspirational things add up to be something pretty fucking big, yeah? Like, I don't know, getting the idea to reach out to someone you care about and reconnecting with them or... Uh, I don't know, stopping at a store to find that they happen to need help just as you happen to need a new job. Meeting a friend, right? A new friend who's, who's you know, guy is a, is, a, is a mechanic and it just so happens your old car just fucking blew up, right? <laughs> Shit like that. Anything can inspire us. And everyone and anything has the potential to do so. Remember that. So, individually... How do we approach this? How do we honor those inspiring events, both big and small, in life? Simple. By being present when they occur. See, being wadded up balls of fucking stress mm, takes us out of the present. And so we miss many opportunities of inspirations. We have to listen to our own truths and learn to honor them. And we have to start by allowing ourselves to go deeper within. Because it's only once we do, you guys, and we listen to that truth our higher self is telling us, which, spoiler alert, is coming direct from the creator of all that is, right? You know, maybe maybe it's just coming through to us, being told to us in a voice, That won't explode our heads. Yeah. But, you know, once we do listen and we can attend to the details of what will bring those inspirations to life in our life. It's our own truth and we just have to come to terms with it. And, you know, it's not always easy. Truth. Truth isn't always meant to be easy. It's only meant to be true. (laughs) (laughs) And I try, you know, I try to do this in my own life. I do. I really do. Um, I've had to make tough decisions, just like many of you probably have, right? But for me, again, I always try to stand with my truth. You know, like, was it hard for me to believe that, yes, I was actually meant to leave 12 years of a relationship with the father of my children? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course it was. Of course it was hard. 
it was hard, but it only appeared hard until I actually acknowledged that that was the truth, that it was time for both of us to let go and and move forward. Mm -hmm. And that everyone affected by the two of us being together would be much happier because of it, right? It goes back to that being comfortable with stress I spoke of earlier, thinking that's how we have to live, that that it has to be that way. It's for the best. But truth is, we don't have to live that way, and it's never for the best. Never. You know? Was it hard that the best case for my life right now And for my children's lives was for them to live where they felt the most comfortable. Even if that means that I, you know, now I see them less than I would like. Of course it was. Of fucking course it was. But knowing your truth and uh, I don't know, just knowing that loving them will never change. So it doesn't really matter where they sleep at night as long as they are happy and safe and secure, which they are. Thank you very much, right? See, a big stress relief to come to terms with in your own life as as it helped my mine, okay? Again, I can only tell you what's helped me and you can go from there. My truth is my own. Hmm? <laughs> It doesn't matter if anyone else fucking understands it or honors it or not. It only matters what I choose to do with my truth. Right? So, no, it doesn't fucking matter what other people say or think or do because the truth is mine and I'm honoring it and it's real. And if I can, I always try. Always. I mean, what else can we do as humans here but try? So yeah, I go about my days with, uh, with a little mantra, right? I say, within me, no matter what or who may come or go, only truth will remain. If I care about you and I tell you as much, it's the fucking truth. If I tell you you're a fucking asshole, well, it's the fucking truth. <laughs> my truth, see? The things we do affect others. But if we live in the light of truth at the very least... We are given the ability to try to heal. Lies, in turn, they only hurt, right? And I've made amends with any lies back then Jen may have been part of. I can only move forward from here, and I choose to do so with truth in my heart and, you know, universal inspiration fucking pushing me along. That's how I live in love, you guys. And I'm better a better, happier, healthier version of myself for it. I truly fucking am. You know, I'm still a little fucking sarcastic. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, often considered blunt. Like, I do like to get right to the point if I can in my life. Because why dwell where there's no sense of value or being valued? Hmm? Again, I am healing, right? But I know that healing doesn't have to make us fucking, I don't know. Naive little robots who only deal with light, light light-hearted situations, right? No. Healing is knowing how to be you and being connected and confidently trusting both the light and dark sides of life. I don't know. I just think, well, I think that it's better to realize for our own selves that we have thought patterns we need to shift, right? I mean, for me, if someone else tried to tell back then Jen that, mm, she might have gotten a little defensive. <laughs> but now Jen, you know, Zenner Jen, <laughs> knows that what I choose to focus on manifests. So I choose my truths and I choose my love. And you can choose for your own damn self. That's the beauty of fucking free will. If free will is the light of our own truth, then I think we should stand tall in that light. And if there is dark there in our truth... We simply need to look at how we can add more light to that darkness and change the story, the energy that's there. Make sense? It's all what's best for you. I mean, if you like the dark, then stay in the dark. If you don't like how it feels, how can you add more light to that situation? I don't know. I guess if we own our truth, speak our truth, 
And if something in life cannot handle that truth, then that something is not yet meant for us. And you know what? Sometimes it may never be. If, if something burns away because of the heat of light of truth, a truth that we know we want to live in, then we have to accept that. Better things will come. We have to see that what cannot stand the truth heat (laughs) is to be set aside, even if only for now. And by doing so, what is left over is what is actually true. Mm -hmm. Like, does someone say the words, but their actions speak a different tune? Then the truth is in the action. Because if the words were true, the actions would match. Yeah? I hope, I hope that makes sense. Living in your own truth will bring you guidance. But you have to seek to understand that for yourself. I guess, I don't know. I guess learn to trust in the changing of your own perspectives. And that it's okay to do so. And also to trust what you're personally perceiving. If it doesn't add up and you can talk about it, you know, in the moment with the person or whatever, then I say do so. I think communication is always key, but the first step in learning that is communicating the truth within yourself, to yourself, and for yourself. Don't focus so much on what is not working as honestly, that's nothing more than your own fucking passing opinion. Allow yourself to be shown different versions of the same event. Maybe it does work if you just tweak your view, yeah? And and flow towards the one that suits you best in your own life. I've learned that for me, I had to stop resisting what was being shown to me, whether it was an inspiration from the universe or through the actions of another human being. Even if I struggled with it or with how I viewed it at first, it always seemed to work out best when I allowed the change in my own perception to take place and just honored my own inner truth. I promise you, my head didn't explode. (laughs) But instead, I did find myself in a more peaceful and positive state of being. And that, my friends, is what I like to call happiness. (laughs) So yeah, you know, I hope this week you focus on your truths, your perceptions. They really can change your reality if you just allow them to. You know, and if you want them to, it's all up to you. It always has been and always will be. Take the inspiration from the universe in each moment and just fucking relax, would ya? (laughs) Anytime you feel self-limiting towards yourself or, or judgy towards others, or you know, if a situation is draining the shit out of you and you don't feel like, you know, you're free, stress free, (laughs) pivot. Pivot yourself and and just open your heart to hear the voice inside that is telling you to focus on those people or things that instead open you up to all the living and endless possibilities because they're always there. It's amazing what a little conscious surrender can bless our lives with if we could only step back, relax, and just allow it to occur. occur. Mm -hmm. So I hope you do. And you know what? That's all for now, my friends. (laughs) I will talk to you all later. Bye.